you. Uh, I have a short question of my own and colleagues. The question line is full. We will have, we won't have time, and I hope I can get to everybody. So I will keep my question really short. In this committee, in previous uh, hearings, we have heard from employer associations, like the Agricultural Food As Association and Farmers Associations, etc. And we will likely continue to hear more from them. They have said to us that open work permits do not work for them because when an individual has an open work permit, they will not work in our industry, they will migrate to another industry, and therefore they are left with no workers uh, for the ag industry, for the mushroom industry, for all kinds of other industries. What is your response to that uh, point of view? Um, May I? Please. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, to that, I will say two things. First, that, uh, um, well, captive labor and unfree labor is not the solution uh, for uh, retention uh, issues. Um, for instance, during the World War II, when Canada and actually the provincial states, uh, the provincial governments decided that the food industry and agriculture industry was important, uh, you know, the state and governments organized uh, accommodation, camps for families, there was uh, also a place for children, buses, transportation, there are all sorts of ways in which actually we could help the agricultural industry other than human rights violation and unfree labor, and this is actually the fact that we have now in agriculture work conditions that are literally conditioned from the 18th century uh, is, is the reason, is, it's actually, I think it's a good thing that they need to be in competition with the agro-food and the other uh, sectors because then, yes, work condition would be better, maybe Canadian would be sometimes back in that sector and, 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 and maybe if we want cheap food, there's other way we can subsidize agriculture. Human rights violation is not the answer. Thank you, Mr. Said. Uh, Mr. Hassan, please. I think if you think about it, you know, all of us know that the cost of food has skyrocketed over the last little while, right? Every one of us knows that this is a huge increase, but none of that money is trickling down to workers. So we have to understand that this is not an uncontrolled labor market where supply meets demand, that increased supply means increased wages or profits are uh, rationally being divided. What is happening is that uh, entire, the entire rural economy has been structured in a way that there are no schools, so you can't have families when you work there. There's no transportation. There's no housing that's being developed. It's not just about access to work permits and people walking away. We, as a country, have developed the agricultural industry. Canada is the world's fifth largest agri-food exporter. This is an agri-specific economy. And yet, there has been no workforce development in that industry. So the only way it is able to work is if you bring in an indentured workforce, you force them to live in warehouses uh, so that there's no roads for them to go anywhere. They can't come with their children because there's no schools, there's no healthcare facilities. And that is how the entire rural economy has been developed. So that is a massive mistake and it's not sustainable. When employers say, okay, if these workers leave, uh, what will we do? Nobody else will work for them. It will force an improvement in labor conditions. It will force an investment in housing, an investment in infrastructure development that's necessary for the Canadian agriculture sector to enter the 21st century. Uh, in fact, to enter the 19th century, as pointed out, because it's still living in the 18th. So I think there's a massive investment to be done, and employers can be brought on uh, into seeing this uh, development as positive rather than actually controlling only one factor, which is an indentured, enslaved, captive, primarily black workforce. 